What is going on guys? Politics Gaming here and today we are finally doing the first series that I have done in at least one to two years. We are going to be starting a new, brand new series as the United States of America. We are going to be starting in the January on January 1st, 2019, where we are going to be playing as President Donald Trump, or Ronald Trump as he is known in the Eversim game universe. So basically what we are going to be doing today, we are going to be dealing with several different challenges we have to deal with as a nation. As the largest economy in the world, I'm gonna, I'm basically in this series, I'm actually gonna try to shoot to get to 2030. That is going to be the goal of this series. Um, so, what are the goals for this series? Okay, so number one, and I'm getting listing these actually off the top of my head, so please mind me. Number one, we are going to make sure we have sufficient energy production and we are going to move away from fossil fuels. We are most likely going to move toward nuclear power and renewable energies. Number two, we are going to fight climate change. As, I, as a lot of you guys know, um, Donald Trump is not the best um, climate change fighter, so I'm, if you're gonna kind of like start saying, well, he's not, he wouldn't really do this, this isn't, this isn't um, playing as Donald Trump as the first United States series was. Uh, basically, I'm playing as myself, and I am playing as uh, someone who, as I'm playing on how I would dictate the policies, not how Donald Trump would dictate the policies. And number three. Uh, we are just going to make sure that we are lowering taxes, we are going to increase funding for things such as healthcare, infrastructure, uh, education, we're going to try and make sure that our um, education policy, education is actually going to be one of the strongest things that I'm actually going to shoot for. Um, I'm actually going to shoot to get a um, number of higher education students to 5%. Um, illiteracy rate, um, we're going to try and but we're actually literally on par with that. Um, getting primary school attendance rate um, up to 9,900% is going to be very easy. Um, because I could literally just uh, increase funding for a couple of these. And then it's actually going to go up. Um, so that's not going to be that much of a problem. Um, percentages of scientists, we're going to go ahead and try to get that to at least 1% of the population. Um, and salaries, we are definitely going to try and get salaries up to um, a very good amount. Um, I think I'm actually going to shoot for about 6,000. We're going to go ahead and double all these salaries. Um, so these are all of our numbers. And what? Um, let's go ahead and check in on our uh, taxes. What is our tax code looking like? All right, so income taxes, we have 37% for the high bracket, 24% for the middle bracket, and 10% for the low bracket. Um, for payroll taxes, we have 15.5% um, going toward the employer. Um, the employers are paying 15.55%, which is actually generating $766 billion. For the employee Social Security payments, they are generating $318 billion with a tax rate of 7.65%. Um, these are basically, in the United States, the, this is what is known as FICA. Um, basically, FICA is a, a, a tax bracket that basically pull is it's the money that, it's the, uh, the government tax that actually pulls money out of your paycheck and distributes it into things such as Social Security um, and th things of that like. Um, and then the rest of your taxes, the rest of your federal taxes are actually uh, paid into the rest of it. Um, this is actually a good example. So 43 cents on the dollar are going toward uh, health, family, and social security. Uh, 10 cents on the dollar, or 11 cents if you round it, um, is going toward debt reimbursement. 19 cents is going toward defense. And 7.6% is going toward um, education, culture, sports, research, and information. Um, what else do we have in our tax code that we're actually going to shoot for? Um, industrial pollution. This is actually one of the largest cash cows um, in this game. I'm going to try to avoid that while also... I'm going to try to get that to about 0.1%. Uh, um, maybe 1% at the highest that I would do. Um, because tax on industrial pollution is such a cash cow for any country that I have ever played... 
um, it kind of does get a little real unrealistic. The value added tax before it was nerfed by Everson was a massive cash cow for the, for uh, the United States, and it actually allowed me to reduce taxes by so much. I would be able to actually get the income tax and actually get the inheritance tax all the way down to as low as um, about 15% for the income and uh, about 25% for the inheritance. Um, so I think the cash cows that I'm gonna have to do, I'm gonna have to uh, do, is uh, I'm gonna have to stick with industrial pollution tax. Um, probably, maybe even get a couple of these taxes while eliminating at least one of these. I'm gonna try to get the company tax to about 15%, and I'm gonna get I'm gonna increase the petroleum and energy product tax um, to maybe about six or seven cents. Um, so I think actually this is going to be my cash cow, um, just to keep it a little more realistic. I'm going to increase the, ta the tax on the industrial pollution, and I'm also going to be doing this. Um, so basically, we are definitely going to try and uh, increase, um, um, try and move away from certain industrial products uh, such as fossil fuels. So now let's go ahead and look at our energy situation. Um, as you know, the United States does start with 71.4% of their electricity production being produced by fossil fuels. 8.5% is being produced by nuclear electricity. 8.4% is being produced by hydraulics. 7.7% uh, is being produced by wind. 1.6% uh, by solar. 0.5% by geothermal. And 1.8% by biomass. Um, so let's go ahead and look at these in um, allocation of terawatts. So what is my energy policy going to be like? Um, so I'm definitely going to try to get fossil energies down to about 50,000 plants. Um, that is going to be a massive amount of power that I am going to be diverting away from fossil fuels and then into new energy sectors. Now, it is very obvious that I am definitely going to be investing hundreds of billions of dollars into third generation nuclear power. This is by far the best investment you are ever going to make in any country in power and revolution. I'm most likely also going to be investing a lot in hydroelectricity as I actually do neglect that. Um, I'm going to get, I'm actually going to get that up to about 15,000. Um, and I'm actually probably going to stop that. So let's go ahead and see how much that would cost. Um, for 300 plants, it would cost 600,000 men. It would take 12 months to do. Um, and then it would cost $2.6 billion and then $13.2 billion and only generate about 16 terawatts of power. Another thing I'm actually going to go ahead and invest in is actually going to be onshore wind and offshore wind. These are actually very um, lucrative as um, energy parks. They're actually very interesting because they actually... Um, now, what something that Everson needs to do, they need to fix like the solar thing. I don't know if that was purposeful or something. I need to email them tonight and try to see what's going on with that. Um, and then what else are we going to do? Um, fuel, we're going to go ahead and do some investments in a fuel. Um, capture and recycling of CO2. So, oh, so, um, so fuel, fuel actually is, um, increase the production of that is actually increased by the capture and recycling of co2 that is actually very interesting i'm gonna have to keep note of that um definitely going to be investing into thousands upon thousands of co2 capture plants as soon as we actually um research them um so what is going to be our first order of business we're going to go ahead and introduce a tax reform bill um so we're going to go ahead and call this the federal revenue act and we're going to go ahead and hit confirm on that and we're going to increase that by 0.1 percent it is going to be very difficult for me to actually um increase um the industrial pollution tax until we get to a certain point um so that's about 54 percent we're going to stop it right there that's going to generate 20 billion dollars immediately and then we're going to go ahead and see how Congress is thinking of that. The Senate barely wants to pass this. 
um, mostly because that actually is controlled by uh, that is actually weird that would I, I feel like these would actually be around 60 or 70 percent especially um, with it's not even that divided I feel like it would be around 50 50 percent if these were actually equally divided it was actually very weird um, we're gonna go ahead and increase the um, tax on petroleum and energy products we're gonna go ahead and see if we can get that up to six six uh, cents on the dollar um, or per liter um, that actually has a better passing rate but has less Republican support um, this is probably going to be very unpopular among Republican legislatures and it's going to be very unpopular um, among the drivers groups um, they are actually the ones who um, really actually hate things such as uh, the carbon tax, highway tax, etc. Um, what else are we going to do? Inheritance tax, gun tax. We're going to actually increase, decrease the gun tax. Let's go ahead and see how that is actually viewed by Democratic colleagues. Uh, that, let's go ahead and do that. And Federal Revenue Act. And let's see how that wants to pass. That is still being accepted. So we are successfully decreasing the gun tax of the employer social security payments. No, that's pretty unpopular. Let's see how that fares out? No. Looks like that's not going to be something that we are going to pursue. Value added tax. Let's see how much that is producing. So $100 billion just for 10% of that. Very, very unfortunate that that was nerfed. Tax on company turnover. Very lucrative. Uh, let's go ahead and generate 5% on that. And let's see the reaction to it. So that's going to go ahead and generate about $400 billion of revenue once that actually does pass. So we're going to go ahead and go to the next day. Um, and then I'm actually going to go ahead and do a couple other things. We're going to we're going to do like a massive change. Um, we're actually meh. Oh yeah, that's actually another thing I'm going to do. I'm actually going to increase funding um, for this. We're going to actually shoot, start building a crap load of uh, of military equipment. This is not something that I've really done in the past. Um, so that's actually going to go ahead and change. So let's go ahead and go to the next day. We have weeding out the terrorists. It's always more worth mentioning, Mr. President, that international terrorism is running rampant in our country. Our agencies remain on standby and are awaiting your decision. But if I could go a moment of your time, I would also direct your attention towards unilateral strategy. In order to destroy international terrorist organizations, branches that per persevere here and around the world, the best thing would be, would be to launch a massive attack on the source that is the directly on our home territory. As that we are actually going to launch a massive counter-terrorism operation in Afghanistan. That is basically where we are only going to be able to get the locations of them. Damn it. That sucks, because I really want to get rid of them. Which actually, it is actually very easy. I think the only prevalent terrorist group that actually happens in the world now is actually the Mujahideen in Afghanistan. Uh, the Islamic State in Syria and a lot of these terrorist groups in Syria actually barely ever survive past 2019. Look at that. 1,000 troops in the Jihadist Caliphate. Very, very... Um, uh, yeah, let's surrender to the terrorist organization. We, have also have, we also have other messages called Don't Forget Ecology. There are actually time bombs that is actually makes it actually makes more sense for her to say that now that we have climate change. Climate objectives. Every year we examine the CO2 levels worldwide and we personally inform every world leader of their progress. The UN is now going to personally inform each leader, blah blah blah. Um, we are coming at the beginning of each year until 2030, date of which, as you recall, we set the goal to reduce CO2, CO2 emissions by 45% in comparison to today. Get to work and we'll see you next year. I wonder what happens whenever you actually get to 2030 and you actually have not reduced CO2 emissions. I wonder what happens. Transportation. Let's go ahead and see what we have here. Let's go ahead and do a massive investment 
um, into road maintenance. That is only actually going to cost $10 billion. That is actually um, a very... Um, some That's actually something that we can actually afford. Uh, what else are we going to do? We are actually going to invest in um, national transportation projects, such as high-speed rail, and then once we actually can, we are going to invest in hyperloops. Most likely, these hyperloops are just going to be between places such as uh, Washington, Chicago, and Los Angeles. What I'm actually going to do is... Um, invest in transportation projects that connect the largest cities in the United States. This is going to possibly just be from New York to Washington to Chicago to California. A lot of these major cities in California as well as the West Coast. Uh, these are also going to span across the southern United States, such as Charlotte, North Carolina, Atlanta, Georgia, the Metroplex in Dallas-Fort Worth, Texas, and as well as some of these smaller areas in New Mexico and Phoenix, Arizona. Um, we are also going to start these transportation projects with a smaller one, which is actually going to be between um, Los Angeles and Las Vegas. Let's go ahead and build that right now. Um, we're actually... which one's closer? So, 435 miles and... 602 miles. Okay, yeah, we can go ahead and just do a uh, Las Vegas, uh, Los Angeles line, and then that is actually going to connect the City of Angels to the City of Sin. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to go ahead and give that full funding. That's going to be 22.2 billion. You know, actually, we're going to go ahead and give that only 15 billion dollars with the funding. We're going to get it done in about eight months. Let's go ahead and confirm on that project. And then let's go ahead and go to the next state, see how our Minister of Transportation actually thinks about it. Here we go, construction has begun, and we can already draw some conclusions. First of all, this is good for national tourism, which will benefit from this new infrastructure. Lastly, the ch cities chosen for train stations are excellent choices and will contribute to their region's development. That is actually very good music to my ears. I always love to hear stuff like that, because I really like to hear my Minister of Transportation saying, yeah. That was actually a good idea for you to build a high-speed railway because we actually needed a railway right there. Another thing we're actually going to concentrate on in this series is actually going to be... Um, where is it? Right here. We're going to go over here. We're actually going to concentrate on getting at least a quarter of the population of the United States um, to start driving electric cars. This is going to be um, a very long process. We're probably not going to get that done until 2030. Um, because I've seen that number rise very slowly, and it takes at least a couple of years for you to get at least a couple of percent um, driving electric cars. However, I am going to invest in electric cars. We're, we're going to go ahead and increase this subsidy. We're going to go ahead and give them a $2 billion um, credit toward their production. They need fuel cell batteries, electricity, obviously, steel, plastic industry, electric materials, and electric components. So, utility vehicles, we're going to go ahead and give $750 million of subsidies. And electric automobiles, I'm going to go ahead and completely exonerate that from federal taxes. So let's go down here. Let's actually go, where was it? This is going to be in fuel cell batteries. We have a really good surplus of that, so we're gonna be able to do that. But it also needs rare earth oxides, nickel, zinc, and chemicals. Um, rare earth oxides, I know we have a production of. Zinc, we need to produce more of that. So let's go ahead and give that $300 million worth of production. That increased it by a little bit. We are now have 9% of production. Let's go ahead and exonerate it. Let's go ahead and, uh, not steal, rare earth oxides, 6%. Let's go ahead and give that $500 million worth of subsidies. 10%, went up to 10%. And let's go ahead and exonerate that from federal taxes. 
then nickel is going to be something we're going to have to import. Uh, why did I X out of that? So let's go all the way down to, okay, so we have we have uh, chemicals. Let's go ahead and give that $6 billion worth of subsidies. Increase that to 15%. What do you need? You need water supply, coal, and oil. I can actually do a massive uh, sur surge in oil production. I can actually start increasing shale oil production. So where is nickel? Nickel, 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 nickel. Let's go to world info. Let's go to production. Let's see who has the most amount of production. Obviously, China is going to have that. Uh, so we're going to have to go to China, Russia, or Indonesia. Canada, we could go to, but they are very expensive since they are closer. But we're going to go ahead and just ship it in. All right, and last order of business for this episode is actually just going to go ahead and... Who actually has the cheapest? I was actually going to do it from Indonesia, but I'm going to go ahead and see who has the cheapest. World Info Production. So China... Oh, man, I almost... Almost imported it from Indonesia. Let's just go ahead and get a trade contract going to China. Nickel. It's probably going to be easier if I did it from Indonesia or Russia. Um, because of my diplomatic relations with China. It's if I can at least spell. So let's go to 20,000. And then let's go ahead and send that contract over. We're just going to go ahead and negotiate this with China. Endocrine disruptors. No more delay. I should remind you of the harmful effects of endocrine disruptors. These substances that are found in numerous consumer goods, such as packaging, cosmetics, pesticides, plastics, etc., are a significant health threat, causing birth defects and cancers, among other things, especially in our children. We should devote more resources to studying, controlling, and banning the most potentially dangerous, like that's what we've already been done in numerous countries, where bisphenol A, mainly in baby bottles, for example. File of Terrorist Suspects, and Orion Space Program. Alright, um, probably is going to be a little easier if we were to actually just import um, from Indonesia, since we actually are not in a geopolitical crisis with them. Because China and Russia, we are currently in the midst of geopolitical crises with them and I'm just gonna go ahead and make it easier for geopolitical simulator ha huh, to actually just increase imports from Indonesia this is probably going to be the only 28,000 let's let's get that down to 25,000 let's go ahead and send that over this is actually going to be a very very good contract Good job by the American Rating Agency. Nice. I must inform you. Twenty-seven thousand, twenty-five thousand. Let's go ahead and give this uh, contract a name. We're going to go ahead and call it call it Nickel Imports, and we're going to go ahead and. Crap, that's only 149,000 of 1.15 million. Or 1.175 million tons of production consumption that I actually need. Um, so we're going to go ahead and try to have to import it from somewhere else. And removal from terrorist suspects and interplanetary. Uh, we're also going to try to um, get someone on the moon by 2024. In order to address the public health problems linked to air pollution, especially in our major cities, we clearly should opt for the development of an electric car. This will allow us to substantially lower the number of premature deaths among those who are vulnerable. However, under our environmental program and with our electricity production relying heavily on fossil fuels, 
these vehicles will still be indirectly responsible for CO2 emissions. Ideally, at this point, we should modify our electricity production facilities to use renewable energies. And that we are already after. Agreement negotiation. Your interlocutor has accepted. This agreement has now been signed. So we now have a complete trade contract with nickel imports coming from Indonesia. This is uh, not going to be enough as we are consuming 1.1 million tons while we are only importing 100,000 tons of, uh, of nickel. So we're going to have to find someone else to actually import it from, possibly going to be Russia. Uh, let's actually go ahead and see what we can do with Russia. So go to nickel, which I actually just saw right there. Only 200,000. Wow, we're, we're going to have to... <laughs> we're going to have to import from a lot of countries for some really good nickel production. How much are you getting? 300,000. We can, again, only... We're getting an average of about 100,000 production we are able to import into our own country. In any case, guys, if you guys like this, go ahead, leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you are new. I'm going to go ahead and try to make this a consistent series that we are going to go after. This is going to be a very fun series to, ha to play with, and I'm definitely going to have fun doing things such as increasing energy production with nuclear power, uh, going after climate change, uh, fighting inequality, and all that in this series Guys, thank you for watching Politics Gaming. I will be here next time in episode 2, where we're definitely going to go start increasing our energy production and moving away from fossil fuels. And we are possibly also going to concentrate on a lot of things such as terrorism and more. Thank you guys so much for watching this, and take care.